Good morning, comrades, inmates and survivors. Well, as you know, I busted my wrist a week ago and I have what they call a radial fracture and a tiny little small bone break. And consequently, I'm sidelined now for about five to six weeks. Can't do a bloody thing as I'm right-handed, although I've got a little bit of movement back again. So I'm learning to do things very differently. And one of those things is if I can't ride, I can still join in and be a pillion. So today there was a ride around the Bay of Melbourne area for originally Indian and Victory riders, but all other, all models are welcome. And so normally I can't get to these rides in this, in other states, because it takes me about two days either side to get there and back, but so that's too much time out. But now the Busted Wrist series has been created. I've become very adaptable and an opportunist. So I flew down to Melbourne and joined a bunch of mates and will be happy being a pillion with Damien on his beautiful Indian Challenger. And you'll remember Damien from the Tassie Tour series. So this ride is also a great cause close to my heart. I do some work for a thing called Gift of Life, which is a New South Wales based organisation. But today we are with another great cause similar, Zadie's Rainbow Foundation which was started by Alan and Kim Turner after the tragic and sudden loss of their daughter, Zadie, at seven years old. One of her wishes and a belief from the entire Turner family was to be an organ donor. And Zadie, God bless her, ended up improving the lives of seven people through her donation. Organ donation is a very misunderstood thing in, in this country and in fact, many others. A big objective uh, for organ donation here is at the very least to raise awareness of how to be an organ donor. You have to physically opt in to be one. There has been a push to be automatically in and therefore you have to opt out, but so far that legislation has never been passed. So it's easy anyway to do. Just Google how to be an organ donor and you will land on a page called Donate Life. Fill it in, takes a few minutes and away you go. Very simple. So every donor can improve and save the lives of up to 10 people. And in Australia, there are approximately 1,700 people waiting for some kind of organ or tissue donation. The other thing that needs to change is that even if you opt in, the family will still have final say. So it's a conversation you need to have. Over 80% of Aussies all agree with organ donation, but sadly, only about 50% give or take have actually gone to the trouble of opting in. And even worse, for those that have opted in, they didn't have a conversation with the family. And in some cases, the family have overridden their wishes and decision. So it's a talk you've got to have. At the end of today's video, stay on for a couple more minutes and I'll share with you one of the best three minute commercials ever made about this sensitive and relevant subject. Yes, it is from USA, but the message is the same. In fact, all around the world, the stats are generally similar. The prize for most organ donors goes to Spain. Let's go and meet some people, some terrific people, and see some beautiful sights and have some fun. I'll show you on the map where and what is planned, and I'll be asking everyone to sign my cast. I've got the textures as well. But first, I have to try and get on this bike with one hand. So let's go, shall we? Pick a colour. Pick a colour. Well, I'll go, I'll go black. Of course, because he rides a black challenger. No. Damien's the first to sign. Da 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 da. <laughs> now I'm going to get on. I've borrowed Damien's helmet. I'm going to get on the challenger with one hand.
what I want to do with you right now is I want you to pull a pen out of my pocket. <laughs> yeah. Okay, you chose green. Yeah. So Alan's going to sign. You're going to give me a signature on my arm there. A-T. A-T for Alan Turner. Okay, stick it back in my bum. There you go. Said the barmaid to the bishop. <laughs> so, look, so how, how many have we got today, Alan? We're probably going, going to push close to 70 today. There's about uh, 44, 48 bikes today. And uh, we've got a few uh, other brands. We've got a Ducati. We've got a Honda Shadow yeah. turning up. We've got Good. a Suzuki. Good. Harleys. Good turn up. Oh, yeah, the weather's going to hold out. It's the beautiful Nicole, Tony, and Martin. Now I'm going to get you to I'm going to get you to put your hand in my back pocket and pull a pen out so you can sign my cast before it gets busy. Put my jacket up. Yeah, someone can put. It started out as fun. <laughs> no more. That's it. Shots. Beautiful, Tony. Good job. Darling, how are you? Good, how are you? I'm good. I'm so delicate, aren't I? Oh, would you like yeah. to reach into my ass pocket? <laughs> I would love to. To sign your name. What did you do? I had too many shots and went over on a cement floor and went to stop myself. How many shots? Well, I thought I only had one, but it turns out I was drinking everybody's. <laughs> Hello, I'm Chris, by the way. Likewise. I feel like I know Chris. She's been watching you all. Oh, have you? Can I go underneath? Oh, you can do it. Do you want me to put it up so you can do that? Do you need how much longer with your cards? Oh, it's only been a week. I only have five weeks. You're an Instagrammer? He can't talk. Alan. Okay, Alan. Thanks, Alan. Very nice of you. <laughs> Off you go. You're going to go sign. Don't be shy. Yeah, what's on? Yeah, but first you've got to reach into my back pocket. Oh, yeah, hang on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a price you have to pay. You just can't fucking sign my thing without... What's your name, by the way? We should be on first name basis. Oh, Dave, okay. We should be on first name basis at least. I'm oh, the luckiest girl in the world. My name is Pedro, capital P-E-D-R-O. Okay, you can spell it, that's good. I like that. It's good that you can spell your own name. Okay, you ready? Signing. You want to reach into my back pocket. Pick a colour. Oh, another lefty. Okay, you've got to reach into the There we go. Oh, I ever get a tap? Okay, no extra charge for that one. <laughs> where do you put your lefty? Yeah, get some Molly Duca. All right, I'll just put my initials. So the ferry goes at one o'clock. Uh, as soon as we get to, to Sorrento, um, I'm not too sure how we're going to do it. You reckon we can block off traffic uh, for two seconds? Because we've got to turn a right-hand turn as we get out. Milab. Mila, the exotic name from? Serbia. Serbia. Oh, Mila's Serbia. first group ride ever. Yeah. Oh, and so. you're on a Scout Bobber 20. Scout Bobber 20. Yeah. We'll have to go and have a look at that. Yeah. Right, let's go and have a look at Mila's bike. Right. And then... Red. That's a very Serbian colour, isn't it? Of course. <laughs> I haven't picked a colour yet. <laughs> Getting good at showing my ass to a lot of people today. I'm gonna go. I don't feel barb, I didn't feel a thing. <laughs> oh, he's very soft on the tuck. Oh! Oh, oh wow. It's beautiful. How comfy are these sort of seats? Take a seat. Do you want to sit on it? Yeah, 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 I do. I mean, I just want to. Anyone need to sit on it? Oh, I wish I could do that, but maybe I have to trade in my Royal Enfield sidecar on one of these. Oh, what a surprise. <laughs> That's lovely. I'm with Rob. Rob's yeah. an author. Yes. And uh, you've written a book. What's the title of it? When the Ship Hits the Fan. When the Ship Hits the Fan. I like that play on words. Yeah. And it's about your life as a ship captain. Why is, <laughs> what's controversial about your book? Well, people don't realise that um, merchant ships, commercial ships don't carry doctors. So the ship's captain, master class one, has to do a course. So load of all the stitching and injecting and gender oh, right. reassignment. Have you delivered babies? Yeah. 
I know how to do that. But so, yeah, I do all of those. You can do things. an episiotomy. So I can do all that. You can so, do an episiotomy, yeah. girl. No, so on, what sort of Indian do you ride again? Yeah, I've got a chief. Oh, the chief. Chief vintage. Yeah. Chief vintage. Yeah. Oh, like yeah, me. Yeah, yeah. Unfold this leaflet because there, I want to. I want to zoom in on. There he is. There, look. Yeah, yeah that's you. Yeah. Look at that. But <laughs> this is the this is the cover of the book, right? Yeah, hold it. Hold that. Hold that. When the ship hits a fan. Come on. You couldn't keep working out last night, could you? Oh my god, is that all I get? <laughs> Mr. Squiggle, is that all Miss James? So here we are coming into Sorrento. We've just done the crossing little village on the fucking other side of the water. And we're coming into Sorrento. About a uh, 30 minute ride. Would that be right? We're about a 30 minute ride from Queenstown. Queens Cliff. Queens Cliff. I've already had a glass of wine for lunch. <laughs> Oh, I've got no hope of knowing where I am. Barbecue okay. time. Barbecue time. I need a sausage sizzle. Is this going to be like the Bunnings moment? Maybe. <laughs> this is a high class Bunnings moment. They're all coming down to their bikes now. We'll go down and get on those. There's the gorgeous Sean Judd and the beautiful Natalie. Look at that. Ready to get on their bikes. On. You've done a stellar job, huh? How long have you been cooking sausages for? Today? Today? Oh. You've just you just got the job. You're in a great job. Are you all just apprentices new to this gig? <laughs> have you been cook very much new to sausage sausage sizzles? You haven't done the Bunnings route then, you know? Uh, once. I've done You've done it once. Oh, so we do have an expert yeah. here. Okay, well that's okay then. Well, I must say, they've been delicious. I'm just about to go into the shelter where there's shade with the lightweights. And they're all hovering under shade. Don't mind a bit of sun. It's about 32 today, I think. 32. It's come quite warm. There they are. There's the shade dwellers. Look at them. Lightweights.
here we are at Frankston and this is the last stop of this poker run so a poker run is where you get each stop you get a card at the end of the run who's got the best hand wins oh, it's the first time I've ever been on a poker run and over there you won't be able to see that but that's Melbourne over there so we're probably I don't know another hour or so away and then it's the end of the day so it's been beautiful what a great ride good turn up of people back home in Sydney. Little sweet baby Jane is waiting for me over there. Well, I've arrived back in Sydney. Sweet baby Jane is waiting for me in the place that I left her. And um, just gonna have a go at seeing if I can pack her up and still ride, but I don't think so. I've got my daughter on standby. Anyway, thanks for watching. I don't know what this um, video is gonna be like, if it's of any interest to anybody. But it might be for the riders that were on that terrific ride yesterday around the Bay of Port Melbourne. And um, back to Sydney, back to work. Let's see if we can start it. Four. Let's give it a little bit of throttle. And turn the key. And... No, I'm not going to be able to ride this. Sometimes when I shake it around a bit, she goes okay. There we go, we got it. But I can't ride. I can't grip the feet. So, that ain't gonna work in Sydney traffic. So I'm gonna make some phone calls and um, see ya. Lisa starts on okay. This is a story about Coleman Sweeney. Coleman, in short, was an asshole. Everyone in his small town knew it. It wasn't that he tried particularly hard to be unpleasant. It just seemed to come naturally to him. Coleman felt like the whole world owed him something. Which caused him to regularly ignore the rules of a decent, acceptable society. And he hated anything that got in his way. Go, you got it. You got it, go. Go, go, man, you can do it. And small animals. Even to children, he was an asshole. He was, as they say, born to it. But then, the strangest thing happened. Something entirely unexpected. Colin Sweeney died. A brain aneurysm. Well, subarachnoid hemorrhage to be more specific. And it came as he argued over whether extra fries should be included in a $1.99 early bird breakfast, which was a typical Coleman Sweeney play. It was then that Sarah found something completely unexpected. Coleman Sweeney had registered to be an organ donor. Nobody knew what caused Coleman to do it, but there it was, generous and majestic. And that was the day that Coleman went from asshole to hero. You see, his liver went to Stan, a father of two. His heart went to Miranda Morgan, who went on to teach for 25 more years. And his tendons went to Staff Sergeant Donahue, who was able to walk again. 
and would never need to be pushed across the street by his physical therapist. And in a moment of small world irony, his corneas went to his 82-year-old next door neighbor so that she could finally see the crap that her dog made in the side yard and pick it up. Yes, in life, Coleman was a bona fide asshole. 365 days a year, 24-7. Hey, baby! But in death, well, let's just raise our middle fingers and shout, up yours, Coleman Sweeney. You're not an asshole anymore.